I am so excited about today's video. This is the first time we've ever done anything like this. We're gonna do a wash and wear test for all of the Quilter's Dream batting varieties that you can get. I absolutely love Quilter's Dream. It is my favorite batting, hands down. I recently had to use another batting because I didn't order one in time to do one. I was on a quilting deadline and I was just reminded of how much I love it and why I don't want to use any other batting. But what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at all the different battings that are available and then we're going to do a wash and wear test where these are going to get washed, the samples, 10 times with a regular load of laundry. So that means we've got to do a lot of laundry in the subbing household. And by we, I mean my husband. I know he's a keeper. And we're going to see how it looks when it starts and then how it looks at the end. And we're going to measure it and see how much it shrinks and how it wears over time. So they all have been quilting using the same free spirit solids. And we have started out with the same size top piece. So we can really see how much quilting and batting and fiber content affects it. So this would be a really fun video and hopefully you can learn a little bit about batting and the different types that are out there. And let's see how this batting holds up over time. So here is our non-scientific test of how we did this. So what we did is we cut all of our backgrounds and fronts to the same size. So we are starting here. We're gonna go ahead and measure the top. We started with a seven inch piece of fabric. And in this case, it has stayed seven inches. And then we quilted those at one inch increments. We're gonna measure them. I'm not gonna show you measuring every single one of these, but if one ends up shrinking more than another, I'll let you know and point that out as we go through it. So I typically quilt with 100% cotton or uh, an 80-20, depending on what's available in the size that I need at the time. This is the request loft. That is the thinnest loft that there is. You can see this is pretty thin when you look at it from above. The one that I normally use is a select loft. It's a little bit thicker, so you can see here. It's just a little bit thicker when you compare it. Um, it has a little bit weightier appearance, but it still drapes very nicely. So if you like a really thin quilt, the request loft is good, but for the most part, I use the select loft. And for all the cottons, they're available in either natural or bleached. Bleach is obviously a little bit more expensive because there's more processing that has to be done to it. So if you like a really thick quilt, the deluxe loft is going to be for you. It almost looks like, to me, almost double the width. So this is the thicker and this is the thinner and you can really kind of see the difference there. And I definitely can feel the difference. So if you want something that's really nice and heavy, then Deluxe is good for that. And they also have a Supreme Loft, which is even thicker. For this one, you can really see that that is a lot thicker. I feel like if anyone was likely to shrink, it's going to be the Supreme because it's so thick. So we're gonna measure this top and see what happened, and it has. So it has not shrunk any in the lengthwise that we sewed. It's still seven inches wide or tall from top to bottom, but it has come down about an eighth of an inch here. So if it's come down about an eighth of an inch, sewing in one inch increments, multiply that by the size of your entire quilt and your quilt might actually shrink up quite a bit when you're using that thicker loft. So that's something to keep in mind depending on how densely you quilt, that could be more or less of a shrinkage factor, but this one has already shrunk a bit before we even washed anything. So now we're gonna get into the 80-20s. This is what I use if I can't use cotton. Um, I think it's just as well. What it means is it's 80% cotton and 20% polyester. That means it's a little bit less expensive. And if you go again with the natural, then it's going to be the least expensive option. But if you have a quilt that's like a true white or very light gray, it's good to go with the bleach because then you don't see it. They do have this pink variety. It's a little bit more expensive, but a portion of the proceeds do go to charity to support breast cancer research. This one is available only in the select loft. So that is the, not the thinnest, but the second thinnest that I prefer to use on my quilts. So Dream Pink, that is their breast cancer support one. This is the exact same batting here, just it is in the regular, you know, white or natural. So then we get into polyester. A lot of people really like polyester batting. They feel like it is warmer um, and it is not supposed to shrink as much in the wash. So we'll see how that goes here. Again, it comes in different weights. So we've got the request loft here, which is the thinnest. Then we have select loft, which is the weight that I like to use as the second heaviest or second thickest. 
And then again, we have a deluxe loft, which is even thicker. This one is actually pretty stiff. So if you like a really stiff quilt, this is a good one to go with. The Dream Poly, this is the one time I will use a poly usually, is when I have a black background. So in this case, this batting has been dyed black. So it's a little bit more expensive, again, because they have more things that they need to do to it. But again, usually polyester is the least expensive of the battings. And I like this whenever I have something that has a really dark back, because sometimes when you are quilting, the needle will pick up fibers from the batting and either push them to the back of your quilt or pull them to the top. And when you have black everything, that doesn't look good when you have white fuzzies poking out all over the place. So I will go for this whenever I have a quilt that is pretty dark overall. And again, this is in the select loft, which is the weight that I like. It is that second thinnest loft. Let's give one of these a measure just for good luck here. Oh, this one did a little shrinking on one side only. That's interesting. So this may have just have been cut a little weird, but we're seven inches here and we are seven and eighth up here. So not sure what happened there, but it did get a little bunched up on the side. Could have been in the quilting process, although it does look fairly flat. So we'll see how that behaves in the wash. Now this one, as you can tell, is super puffy. Um, this is Dream Puff. And this is for if you want something to be like really lofty. Loft is refers to how thick the batting is. And this one is lofty, it's very high loft. So this would be really fun for Christmas stockings or anything where you want to have the appearance of puff. But even though this looks really thick, it actually is very light. So it doesn't really um, affect much in terms of, of weight. It's not gonna give you like the weighted blanket feel, um, but it is pretty thick. So let's go ahead and measure this because I am almost positive that this has probably shrunk off a little bit. Oh, that has shrunk a lot. Okay, so again, where we quilted vertically, that has not changed. That is seven inches. But from widthwise, we have lost a full quarter of an inch. Um, off of a seven inch width. So again, if you think about that going across the length of something, or especially if you're doing lots of swirls, it's gonna get super puffy and it's going to shrink up quite a bit um, if you're doing a larger quilt using this. So keep that in mind as you're working on it because I mean, well, you can just see it from going up the top. It really puffs that up and creates a lot of texture there and everything just kind of shrinks up in there. Ah, dream wool. Okay, so I love dream wool. I know it feels like it it should be heavier, but it's not. It's like that you know polyester one that's super lofty. It's the same deal where it actually is a little bit lighter than some of your cottons or your 8020s, but it gives you this lovely little puff. So if you have a quilt where you really wanna show off a lot of dimension in your quilting, then this is a really good one to use. You can use it on your own, or you can put a layer of poly batting underneath. I will tell you though, that if you do that, your quilt will be rather stiff until it's been washed a few times. I have one now, my husband, hate sleeping under it because it, it is really stiff when you're sleeping under it. But I got it out when the polar vortex went through the Midwest this last winter. And I will tell you, I was very warm under that quilt, um, even though it wasn't super heavy. So this one too, it's very thick. You can see from there. And it also creates that puff factor. And I bet you it has shrunk quite a bit as well. So let's measure that. Yep, we've lost a full quarter inch here too. Again, from top to bottom, that measurement stayed the same. So it's still seven inches tall because we just did the straight line quilting, but from side to side, we've lost a full quarter inch. And just to give you an idea of this, the quilt that's on the cover of my book, Simple Quilts for the Modern Home, Natalia Bonner quilted that with wool, and it was great. It, it really created this beautiful texture when it was quilting, but it shrunk so much that when I went to do a piece binding on the edge to keep that star going out to the binding, I had to actually cut a quarter inch off of each of those strips because the quilt had shrunk that much when I would, it had been quilted. That was a huge quilt, you can't tell, but it will do that over time. This is also a great way to do it if you have you know, some things to hide in your quilting. I had one that was supposed to go in a magazine and I didn't realize until I was piecing it together that the two and a half inch strips that I had sewn together and then cut into equilateral triangles were wider than two and a half inches, which meant that when I started to sew them to other pieces that were cut to the right size, that it was 
that fitting right. And I did a layer of poly and a layer of wool over it and then I got creative with my quilting and it just looks like that puff is supposed to be there as opposed to me having to fix a problem. So we all make mistakes, me included, but there are ways to fix them. And so if you have a quilt that isn't exactly perfect, one of these lofty battings could be your answer because it can take up some of that ease. So now we're gonna get into some of the specialty battings. This one is Dream Blend. It is 70% cotton with 30% like of a silky poly. And so that's kind of a mix of everything there. And it is very soft and it does have definitely a silky feel to it. It is pretty thin, so it is not going to be that bad. And generally when you have a mix of stuff, it does impact the price a little bit. It brings it down a little bit just because cotton is expensive. We know this. We also have a bamboo. I quilted a quilt with bamboo and it is the softest, snuggliest quilt I have ever had. Um, it just has this really soft drapey feel to it. And I wish you could feel this. It's so, so soft and it really drapes very nicely as well. It's not too thick. And let's do the measure test. I'm pretty sure we haven't lost anything on this one. Yep, this held its shape perfectly. So that's a really good potential option. This is probably the batting I am most excited to see how it washes. I have not sewn with this, but depending on how it washes up, that may change. This is Dream Green. It is made completely 100% from recycled plastic bottles and it literally is a little green. Um, I know it looks like it's tinted more green because we use kind of a seafoam fabric for it, but it is the least expensive batting that they have. And the fact that it's 100% made from recycled materials is just fabulous. So I'm really excited to see how this works. Um, it's available in select loft, which is that second thinnest loft, which is the one that I prefer to work with. So if this holds up nice over wash and it continues to be drapey and lovely, I'm definitely gonna try this in a quilt and see how it goes. Let's do the measure test real quick and just see how this holds up. Currently no shrinkage. So we'll see how that goes over time and we'll see how it ends up. Dream Angel, this one is specifically made for kids bedding. It is 100% flame retardant fiber. So if you want something that you're making for your child or your grandchild and you want it to be at the same quality as the fabric that goes into their sleepwear, this is a really good one to use. Again, it is in that select loft. And so it's gonna be that nice, thin, very drapeable consistency. So let's, and it does feel nice. It's not quite as soft as like say the silk, but it does feel nice um, when you're working with it there. And let's go ahead and measure. Yep, no shrinkage there. Cool stuff, we're going to now get these bound and we're gonna bind them like at the size they are. We're not gonna cut them down or anything. That way, you know, we all started with the same size top. We're gonna bind them all and then we're gonna wash them and we're gonna see how they hold up over time, if that batting shifts at all over time, if it continues to be drapey, all that fun stuff. And we're gonna also measure what it's like at the end and see if we, how much shrinkage we had and how much puff factor we ended up with. So it's gonna be fun. I'm really excited to see how some of these that I haven't sewn with um, hold up and how, especially that one that's 100% plastic, um, recycled plastic, that could be a game changer. So the next time you see me, I'm gonna be wearing something else and we're gonna be seeing how these held up. All right, so I have washed everything. I have my trusty ruler here and I've got some notes so I know what we did the last time because it's been a little while since we filmed. And we're gonna measure and have some moment of truth to see how these held up. I, first of all, I think it's important to note that everything held up really, really well. The batting didn't shift at all on any of them. So I know that's always a concern when you are doing a project. Will your batting move over time and you've got clumps in some space and no batting in another? That didn't happen with any of these samples. So that's number one. So now we're going to go through, we're going to go in the same order and we are going to measure them out and see how it all turned out. All right. So we're going to start with the cotton request loft. This had not shrunk at all before we started. Reminder, we started everything at seven inches and we are looking at uh, six and a half inches from top to bottom. And it's stayed mostly square. It's a little, a little smaller on this corner here, um, but it stayed mostly square. It shrunk a half an inch uh, from seven inches. Um, the cotton did as a whole shrink a little bit more than some of the others when I was looking at. This is the thinnest batting that they have. It is 100% cotton. 
Next up is the Cotton Select. So that is about the middle of the road. This is the one that I use on everything. It did shrink a little more. This one we are looking at about six and a quarter. We started off at seven inches. Um, I was a little worried that it would not shrink evenly because we only quilted top to bottom. We didn't quilt side to side as well, but it did shrink evenly and it created a nice little crinkle. So if that's something that you like, um, the Cotton Select shrink a little bit more. Now, when we got into the thicker cottons, we experienced a lot of shrinkage and not necessarily evenly. So this is a deluxe, 100% cotton. This one shrunk where we did the vertical quilting. It is six inches from side to side. And here where we quilted it this way, we're looking at six and a half. So if you were to use this one, you would absolutely want to do, it gives you a bigger pop, it's definitely thicker. You can feel a difference between this and the thinner ones. But you would want to do an all over design or an even grid, or it's not gonna shrink evenly when you do it. All right, this is Supreme Loft. This is the thickest batting that they have that is 100% cotton. This one also shrunk to six inches wide. Um, this one did shrink a little bit more evenly though, because we're at about six and a quarter here. Um, so that one provided a, a little bit more even results when it comes time to to quilt it. So I would actually prefer, if I wanted something that was really lofty and puffy, I would prefer this Supreme to the Deluxe because it performed better over the wash cycle. All right, so now we're gonna start looking at the 80-20s. So that is 80% cotton, 20% polyester. Typically they're a little bit lower priced because polyester is less expensive than quilting cotton or to cotton to make the quilting batting out of. So let's see how they perform. They should have shrunk less as well. All right, so this had really even shrinkage. It's six and a half, all the way around, which is the same that we found with the select for the 100% cotton. So in terms of how this wears over time, exactly the same as the 100% cotton. And that's good news to me because I alternate always between the 80-20 and the 100% cotton. And to me, they quilt the same, but they also clearly are wearing the same and shrinking the same as well. So that's good that you have consistent results. This one was the pink, the one that's dyed pink. This one is just the regular and exact same result six and a half all the way around, really nice even shrinkage and um, pretty even, even puff around that as well. All right, so now we're gonna get into the polyester. So this one is 100% polyester. This is the request loft, so that is the thinnest one that is available. Oh, all you polyester fans who say you like it because it doesn't shrink, it shrunk the exact same amount as the 80-20 and the 100% cotton. It's about six and a half inches all the way around. We started at seven. We had the exact same results for the other two. So for those of you who are like, I like my poly because it doesn't shrink, same exact same results. So that's, you know, I I would have a little beef. Uh, I, I think I won a little argument with one of our staff members who is always 100% poly for this. So I'll have to tell her about these results. All right, so this is a poly select. This is the weight that I use all the time. And this one did shrink a little more than the request, but it's still right around six and a half. All right, this is the poly deluxe. This is the one that I didn't really like the way that it shrunk with 100% cotton. This is not as the thickest one, but is the second thickest. And that one shrunk quite a bit and unevenly for the 100% cotton. For the poly, it stayed at six and a half and shrunk very evenly. So if you are looking for that deluxe loft, you would want to use it with the poly instead of the cotton because this performed a lot better over wash and wear. All right, this is a poly select black. So this is the one, the batting that was like jet black that you would want to use if you have a dark quilt and a dark back. So that way you don't see the white puffies coming through. So let's see how this performed. A nice even and a half, six and a half for all of them. So that's good. I've used this in quite a few quilts. I really like the way it looks. And it's good to know that again, it performs the same as my preferred 100% cotton and 80-20. All right, so this one, I felt a little disappointed by when I pulled it out for its final wash. This is the puff. So this is the one when we originally looked at it, it was super, super puffy. And after 10 washes, it is no longer super puffy. Um, I cannot really tell the difference between this and one of the thicker loft battings. So I don't think it's it's worth going with that if, if the puffy is what you're looking for. I would go with maybe the cotton supreme loft. 
Um, the shrinkage was pretty good though, a nice even six and a half for all of them. So very consistent with what we've been seeing. All right, so this is the wool batting. I've used this in a couple of quilts as well, both on its own and then also with a layer of polyester underneath to provide extra puff. And let's take a look and see if it shrunk at all. Cause I know people are always like, oh, well, it's gonna shrink so much, but it really didn't. It's, it's right at the six and a half as well. It's a little bit under six and a half, but it's really close. So it is not that much more shrinkage than the cottons or the poly or the, the blend. This one did retain some more of its puff, I think better than the puff batting. So if you're looking for that, then I think wool is a really good option as well. This one's also very drapey as well. Um, so that is a good option for you guys. And I can attest that wool is super, super warm to sleep under, especially if you layer it with that poly underneath. All right, so now we've reached the blends and the specialty batting. So this one has a little bit of everything in it. We're gonna take a peek and see how that looked. Again, six and a half. I feel like I'm a broken record. Um, I don't see any difference in the wear of this. Um, I feel like it's not as drapey as like the wool, but to me, this washed and weared pretty much the same as everything else that we've been seeing, which is which is well. Um, I wouldn't see any reason to use this over um, your cottons or your 8020s or your poly if that's what you prefer. Um, because it just, it looks the same to me. All right, I'm, I'm gonna have a confession here. I'm a little scared to someday wash my quilt that I use the bamboo batting in because this is the one that I can't get to lay flat anymore. It like curved up in the dryer on that point and it just doesn't, it doesn't wanna go back down. Um, so that makes me scared. To, I haven't washed my one that had the bamboo in there. Um, this one also shrunk unevenly. So this one, it's six inches here and it is about almost six and a half um, in the vertical area. So if you were to do this, again, you would want to do an all over quilting design and that would probably work better than here where there's just a straight line and it just wants to fold up and be on it. And then it would shrink evenly as well. Of course, the quilt that I did that has the bamboo in it is straight line quilting. So that one just may never get washed. Um, so this one, this one has me a little scared, uh, but it is a nice renewable resource. And so if that's something that you really care about, um, then, you know, maybe things like this are something that you would overlook. But it is very soft and drapey before you wash it. So if you just never wash your quilt, it's it's gonna be fabulous. And I typically, I don't think I've washed very many of mine. I just rotate them out before they get too dirty. And there, there's only a select few. The ones where the kids have been washed, the ones that have actually been on our bed for a significant amount of time have been washed. Most of them just get rotated in and out and um, with enough frequency to where we don't ever have to wash them so that's maybe you find that gross but that's how I do it all right so this one we are really interested in uh it's the green batting I wouldn't consider it super it's 100 percent plastic recyclables that is what this is made of I wouldn't consider it super drapey but I also don't feel that much of a difference between this and the other uh fiber contents so let's see how it measures up six and a half all right, so if you are budget conscious, if you are environmentally conscious, I think that this is a really good option, maybe even more than the bamboo, because this, to me, looks a lot better than this um, from a finished wash standpoint. And so I would prefer this over the bamboo. It's, it's less expensive. Um, it is completely recycled. This one is a renewable resource, but this looks to me a lot better than this does. Lastly, we have the Dream Angel. This is the one that is uh, fire retardant. So it's made from the same uh, specifications as children's sleepwear. So that's a good option for any type of kid's quilt. Let's see how it measures up. Six and a half. All right, so for the most part, everything performed really evenly. There were a couple that shrunk more than others where you would want to make sure that you are doing the overall quilting on instead of just straight lines like we did here. So that way when it did shrink unevenly, it would shrink unevenly over everything. Um, there's a couple that I maybe wouldn't use, um, but, or that I would, you know, think, well, this one performed the exact same. So this one's easier to get and I'm gonna use it. Uh, I still, I feel very vindicated that the poly shrunk the same amount that the cotton and the wool and everything else. And so, you know, it's, it just goes to show that this is just a really good product. I really love Quilter's Dream. 
you can't see through it. There was one quilt one time that I did where I used a red back because that's what I had available to me. And I needed a white batting because I had a white background. And that white batting was so translucent that it ended up making that background look a little pink when I looked at it because that red just shone straight through and it was so disappointing to have that happen and that is not something that happens with Quilter's Dream because it is a thick like it's even the thin batting is like thick and dense fibrous content so that way you're not going to see what's going on on your back so that way you can pick whatever you want you're not limited to doing something that's lighter because let's face it we all live in a world where there's kids and dogs and husbands who spill stuff all over the place and we don't always want to have bright white things because we they might not stay that way um, so I don't want to be limited by that so that's one thing that I I really enjoy about Quilter Stream. Um, and also, I was really impressed with this wash and wear. I think that that uh, the green one that was made up from 100% uh, recyclables, that surprised me. That did really well. I'm, I'm glad to see how that worked out. I was glad to see that everything shrunk about equally so it really doesn't matter which one you choose they all are going to shrink up about the same all of these were washed with cold water and then tumble dry low so they were all treated the same they all went through the same wash cycles um and really there were only a couple where i was like oh, i don't know that i would do that like the puff you know i think i would if i wanted a puffy quilt and i wanted to stay puffy over time i think i would go with that supreme loft with the cotton or the wool and do one of those or do the layer of the poly and the wool on top of it because that definitely retains its puff. I've washed a quilt like that before. So I hope you found this educational. I have enjoyed doing it and learning a little bit more about the battings that I use every day. And if you want to check it out, we don't have all of these in stock. Head on over to shop.quiltaddisanonymous.com. Mm -hmm.